No, Andrew's videotaping a hand to make face. What's up, Andrew? I don't know if this is what you want to be recording. This is that conversation you want It's been a while since we did one of these. Oh, boy. It's comedy gold. <laughs> Camera-ception! No, BTS! Ah. BTS! BT, BTS! Behind the scenes! Behind the scenes! Not the K-pop dance group! Oh my god! Oh my god! And it's Bailey! Bailey, Bailey! <laughs> 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 Just more proof of my hustle. It's currently, I'm going to open it close these down here. It is currently 5.54 a.m. in the morning, Saturday, April 21st. And just kind of give you guys a hint of what that feels like. Let's go, out, let's go out the back door. Ready? The sun is just starting to come up. So, that's a little ridiculous, but uh, the pre-release people, oh, sorry, I'm just going to cut this way. Um, the last bit of people just left. Um, I've been actually up here just cleaning up, resetting the store, doing my best to get ready for the next day, but I am just literally hitting a wall. Uh, I just sent a message to kind of my teammates here. Hopefully, they can kind of pick up the rest of the pieces in the morning, but, you know, I had to completely clean, pick up the trash, take the trash bags, clean the bathrooms, fix the bathrooms. We had an issue there. Um, and just get ready for the next two events because this weekend, um, it was just, it was, it's just gonna be crazy. Speaking of which, um, obviously I didn't make an intro to this segment, so I'm trying to do this whole weekly recap thing again like I did when I first opened, so a couple clips here and there and just do the weekly recap and then talk about a topic, but, uh, today was, I'll talk a little bit more about today once I have a little bit more body in mind. I'm just, I'm about to crash, so I'm like doing my best to do the last minute things, I'm gonna go home shower, sleep, and then come back as ASAP because I have to be back. You know, I have, there's three events tomorrow that I have to prepare for uh, on top of having to run errands for the shop and everything. So the hustle is still real. You know, almost three years later, the hustle is still very, very much real. Um, do I miss this? Physically, no. <laughs> um, but this is what it takes this is what it takes, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it takes to run a store. <laughs> but yeah, let's tune, but let's go ahead and just get ready for the rest of the weekend. Today was obviously very busy. Um, I'll talk about more things later. Wow, I can't talk. It's late. I'm just gonna just cut. Just cut, 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 cut. <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah. Where are you going, buddy? Who are you trying to talk to? Who's on the phone with you? Uh, huh? Uh, Who's on the phone with you? Ali. Really? Ali. Well, what do they say? Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> June, I don't think your ear's on your shoulder. Oh. Hey. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? No, not not mommy slippers. <laughs> oh, you're putting it back? Okay. Oh, Please. you're actually putting it back for once. Eh, I'll give you a pass for that one. I'll give you a pass. Where are you going? Where do you gotta go? No. Yeah, he's figured that out. What? You gonna go upstairs? Yeah. Are you gonna go upstairs? Yeah. Careful. Huh? Oh. Put it back. <laughs> <laughs> so.
So it's currently, oh, I don't think you can see it here, hold on. There you go, it's currently April 22nd, 5.30 in the morning. Again, I'm here again. <laughs> Another day filled with events. We actually had uh, three different events firing today. And I'm probably more tired, if not just as tired, or sorry, I if I'm just as tired, if not more than tired yesterday, than yesterday because I didn't really get too much sleep this uh, this actually not this morning but yesterday morning now um, my son was a little bit cranky I, I forgot to turn off this breaker boom distraction done um, no it's just uh, uh, he didn't really get too much, he didn't really sleep too well and he woke up very cranky so I ended up staying up a little bit but um, today's events um, came and went it was another pretty pretty um, it was a steady day it wasn't too crazy but it was definitely steady. Um, Weekends have started definitely picking up more consistently, so that's very nice. I'm just gonna pace around here really quick. I visually check. I got I got the vacuum too, so um, I probably have another hour worth of work ahead of me um, to get done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But um, no, the the big thing, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be talking in the recap video possibly tomorrow. But um, Saturdays and Sundays have started. You know, they were back and forth for a while there. Um, they started getting more consistent, so that's really good. We're getting more different types of people, different types of events coming out now. That um, the, the the expansion that we're planning um, is more than justified because a lot of customers are saying, "Oh man, like you know, you don't have seats again. You, you know, this is, um, you know, it's not a bad problem to have. You know, it's a problem that needs to be addressed, but it, it's not a bad problem to have when you don't have enough seats." Uh, for your customer base because guess what that means more and more people are coming in so I'm really I'm really happy that we're starting to reach that stage finally um, and things are starting to work I just realized it's gonna work up here too so as I'm gonna finish talking here I'm gonna start wrapping up and get going home I'm probably not gonna get too much sleep again today because I do have to come back and um, run another event tomorrow <laughs> uh, hopefully my uh, my one uh, my friend who's coming in to help open the shop tomorrow can handle the one term in the morning and so I can get some sleep um, and be able to rest in here. Sorry for the super pants here. Oh my god. You know, sometimes, you know, these are the kind of little things that bother me. It's like, I know who was sitting here. This is nothing. Like, they're just leaving the wrappers on the ground. Um, you know, I... I love my customer base, but there are days I don't like, yeah, yeah, there are days where I'm angry. I won't say I hate. Hate's a very strong word. Um, I get angry. It's because it's like common courtesy. Throw away your trash, please. You know, throw away the wrappers. Don't throw popcorn everywhere. It's the kind of stuff I have to deal with. You know, here, I'll, I'll show you guys really quickly down, just down this way here. You know, someone apparently got some popcorn and just threw it all over the place. <laughs> now, is this a rant video? Not meant to be, but it's slowly becoming. So I'm going to stop right here uh, because I got a ton of work to do and everything. But um, no, it's, you know, a lot of people ask, do I enjoy doing this? I do not enjoy being up this late, you know, though it, it's kind of reminiscent of, of like three years ago when I used to do this. Um, like when it was, like, you know, how it was before. Um, when I first started uh, this whole journey, I was up this late talking about this stuff. And, you know, it was like I was really, I was high energy, you know, being like, oh, I'm really looking forward to the next day and everything. Now it's just like, it's the daily grind. Um, this is not a normal weekend, by the way. Uh, this is this is what happens during like pre-release weekends when um, I have to run the midnight event that ends at four or five in the morning. And then I have to run Saturday. Then I have to run Sunday, you know. And then, you know, I have to open and close the store. I have to, you know, it's just all this other stuff that comes in, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. If anything, compared to years ago, it's weird kind of saying that, I can say years ago now, um, there's more stuff to do. You know, you have, to, you have to take out the trash, wipe the tables down, reorganize the tables, reset the stations, uh, replace the bags, restock the shelves, turn off all the systems, turn off all the lights, re, you know, Take back all the systems that don't need to be out there. Make sure the back is organized. Make sure all the the, the uh, all the uh, food is all organized and everything. Make sure it's clean and ready to open. Because before I would just sleep over, 
and then just do it in the morning and everything. But mornings have gotten so busy now that we have to make sure that it's ready to go as well. Um, so it's a lot of work that goes into it. And it's not more of a complaint. It's just showing that the, the process and the, you know, the care of the store has gotten bigger and has gotten better. Um, the store's getting busier that we have to, it merits me having to stay this late and everything. Um, so I don't know. I'm dragging on at this point. I'm ranting. We'll just continue, we'll continue the rest of this vlog tomorrow. Maybe. We'll see. All right. Well, what's going on, guys? I got to do the time period. It is currently 2.25 a.m. Technically Monday morning, but, you know, uh, Sunday evening. It's April 22nd, but it is technically April 23rd, Monday. But the weekend is now over. Um, I'm actually not as rested as I sound or look, and I do apologize for the focus and the lighting. Um, uh, fortunately, it's a, the, the car that I used to vlog from from before I traded away. That had better lighting uh, than the two vehicles that we have right now. So I feel like it's only gonna be, you know, I'll do my best to try to stay forward so I'm well illuminated like this, but I gotta drive safely, so I gotta be careful. Um, but yeah. I apologize for the previous two clips. I was very tired. Um, it was just a long weekend. But the focus of this video I'm gonna be talking about during, hopefully, I'm gonna try to keep it short, the last one was a little bit long, is uh, to the point. It was, uh, it's gonna be talking about the hustle. Um, and what I kind of, so, you know, in the, in the coming weeks, I'll be talking about kind of what I learned from last year and kind of what happened at the same time. But one of the biggest things was, um, is the, the biggest thing that I'm focusing on right now with the expansion is preparing myself correctly and not rushing into it and build, you know, make sure that I cover as much of my bases as possible because I'm not going to protect myself completely. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm honest with myself, you know, you're not going to be able to prepare for every single situation, but the more you prepare, the, you know, the more you're ready, the better you are prepared for when things do happen. Um, uh, because the biggest thing that happened last year was, um, it was actually right when I decided to go work full time with, um, and leave uh, the, the employees I had at the time. And because it was right when my wife went into um, maternity leave, she was unpaid, so I decided to work full time. It happened starting then, so it was almost a year and a half ago that this kind of began, but I pulled away from the business back then. And I took a back seat because I was working full time. I went to work at like four or five a.m. in the morning, didn't come back to the evening, and you know, it was exhausting. I would stop by the store for a few hours and that will be it. On the weekends, I would work full shifts, but I, that began the whole process of me pulling away from the business um, and getting detached. And nothing against the guys I had then. You know, I'm actually in the process of possibly hoping to bring them back, but I didn't train them properly. And what I mean by that is I didn't prepare them um, I didn't, I wasn't as much, I wasn't as hands-on as I should have been with them. But more importantly than that was, I wasn't ready, I wasn't in a position to have employees then. I really wasn't. Looking back now in hindsight, I shouldn't have had employees because I wasn't ready. Even right now we are struggling and we're just getting to the point now where we can start hiring people comfortably and correctly. But last year, we were doing probably about half of what we're doing now, or two years ago now, um, and I overextended myself. But instead of letting go of those guys, I instead just went out and got a full-time job. When in hindsight, I should have, it should have been the other way around, I should have let everyone go at the time, you know, swallow the pride and do make that difficult decision and just do it by myself. But I didn't. And then on top of that, last spring, so actually right around this time, uh, well, starting January, we were kind of introduced to a group that presented a really great opportunity at the time. And I'll, I'll talk about that more in the future, but essentially it was a really good opportunity, but with it was, it was a lot of risk from our end, but the risk, it was high risk, very high reward. Um, 
because of this decision, we ended up losing two of our business partners um, because they didn't agree with me at the time. And you know, they're at the end of the day, their points were valid because you know, you know, they were rightfully scared to do so. And you know, I was overextended at that point, um, and I was starting to lose focus because of this, you know, of this opportunity. But even during those times, I'm gonna turn my lights off here. But even during those times, sorry, I just passed the cop, so you're just gonna hear audio for right now. And I'm gonna come back. There we go, sorry, I gotta be careful around cops when I pass them. Um, but the, the opportunity that was presented, it, it, it felt safe because yes, we, we had to take on another, you know, we had to take on additional financing. Um, I had to hire on more people so that was that's where it started again so I had to hire on more people to cover the home store and then I had to go away to do this um, and then this required me to quit my job at the time too the one that I went back to that I quit before that I went back to uh, I had to quit and then move away essentially and then I was away from my home store long story short for almost four months three to four months I was completely detached in a way and I was 100% away from my house. So I wasn't with my wife and I wasn't with my son at all during those times. I just, I saw, I talked to them maybe once or twice a day, video chatted and essentially, you know, that really took a toll because um, the overextending part was the home store. So I won't talk about the experience down there, but the home store was not left properly. The vision that I had wanted it to go, the direction I wanted it to go, the customer service, just the overall store experience took a major hit while I was away. It started deteriorating when I went back to work full time, but when I fully stepped away, put a crew in there that I didn't train 100% myself, and it was almost out of it was almost out of necessity and need. It was almost out of, like being desperate. I hired on a few people and just didn't work out. You know, and I and I take 100% blame on me because I put us in that situation. And long story short, I'll go over the whole what happened with the expansion thing, you know, the failed expansion later on, but I didn't prepare for what the worst case scenario would be. I didn't. And we ended up being hit because worst case scenario plus like you know, I thought, you know, worst case scenario, we would maybe break even during the event because I didn't think what happened would have happened, but it happened. Um, and we ended up being, it was a roller coaster of a mess. And I'll, I'll go over that in the future one day. But essentially, we came back and I had f several difficult decisions to make. And it was, I had to essentially decide whether to just quit the business, close it all down, and go back to work full time. Or I had to literally just make massive, I had to let the entire staff go, literally the entire staff, and get back to running the store by myself. And I think I talked about that a couple weeks ago, but I ultimately made the decision to go ahead and cut the staff and do it by myself and that was definitely not an easy decision for me it really wasn't like it was I was firing my friends essentially but that was the kind of the difficult position that I was put into I let my feelings and my personal feelings get in the way of making proper business decisions for too long and so for the last six months, it was consistently making cuts, 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 saves, but as, as well as reinvesting properly and growing the business back to where it is today. Like I won't go over in detail kind of everything that I went to, but it was, it was not an easy decision. I came back in June and starting June and July, it was the grind began. And it's been, a, it's almost been a year. What's crazy is it's been a year since I went down when I officially left my house to go down to do this and looking back you know and looking forward to this expansion that's coming I've been doing everything that I can to make sure that we cover our basis you know if we go what happens if we fail what happens if literally we go and the business doesn't grow I have to plan for that and I am I have to plan for every little thing you know it's just been 
what's funny is this is probably a significantly safer risk than what we did last year but I'm maybe four times more afraid and it's because that's how badly we got burned last year from that event um, and there are times where I get scared and I get upset and I get sad but ultimately I look back it was a very positive experience and actually the individuals that we worked with I met with them a few weeks ago and you know they they you know took me out to lunch they just they were just checking in on me and see how I was doing and you know they still feel bad and I appreciate that you know because it made me it reassured me that it wasn't just you know they just saw me as you know expendable they really saw how hard I worked and how much we risked and how much damage it really did to us but they were surprised and thinking that you know I was actually very positive about what happened because it was a that whole experience was a giant wake-up call that I wasn't running this business the way I should have been I made a crap ton of mistakes. I miscalculated a lot of things. I made poor decisions. I made a lot of personal decisions. And I wasn't, I wasn't focusing on myself. And I wasn't running, like I, I essentially was running it to the ground. I was running myself to the ground for nothing. And when we came back, I was able to correct the business, so I gained control back of the business again. Um, and long story short, I know I keep saying that, I, this is me trying to just like get to the point, it's, you know, I've now brought up to the business to the point where it's starting to break even. If it wasn't for some of our debts right now, we'd be making money right now. But, but it's weird, it's like, we're not making money, but we're now in a situation where a situation where if it wasn't for the debt, we'd be making money, and that's actually a good thing. It, it, it's it kind of difficult to see, but it's like the business is profitable if it was like this from the get-go. If, if if that kind of makes sense. But I've done my due diligence to make it succeed now to the point where we are in need of a space. We're in need of additional space, additional services because. You know, my business plan is starting to be fleshed out more and more now. We are far from where I want to be right now, but it is now just starting to take shape and light. And now we can start taking this and going with it. And we're now in a situation again where we might have to take additional financing to really fulfill the space, to hire on more staff. I am currently looking for staff right now, but at the same time, I'm also weighing out the risk of, is it worth taking out additional financing to hire these people? You know, there's a lot of calculations I have to make because being an entrepreneur, you have to be aggressive. You have to be forward thinking. You have to keep innovating yourself keep expanding keep coming with new business ideas to keep going and keep up to date and stay competitive you know you have to be the Steve Jobs and go crazy and be thinking but what I learned last year was but you also like you also have to be able to play devil's advocate and see the other side and you know a lot of things you know and that's the biggest thing that you have to understand if you're thinking about a business idea you have to weigh all the risks. You really do. And you know, I'm gonna repeat this a lot, but a lot of people who think they can just go in, they can just, they have a good business idea, start a business, they have, they don't really consider all the work that has to go into it, all the failures that could happen. Um, just today, you know, I probably, you know, I, I talked, I think I said in the clip before, and. You know, I apologize if, I, if I'm repeating myself, but it's, you know, I spoke with um, one of, uh, you know, one of my co old co-workers' son, you know, they were the ones that really motivated to me really start this business. And, you know, he was rejected from school, his second choice. And he was really distraught. He was, you know, he was to the point of tears and crying, you know, and he was just like, he put all this work into this and all this and what does he get out of it? He doesn't get into any of the schools that he really wanted to get into. And he was really upset and he's a high schooler and I'm not going to downplay 
his feelings because in that moment in his life he feels like a true failure and I understand that and that's like but when I'm talking to him I'm like I'm one of the rare people that could it's not even the rare people there's so many people that can relate to him and even in my current position right now I put in so much work into this place and there have been a crap deer get out of the road dude I'm driving here but there's a bunny too is this like the Bambi meetup? Okay, well, sorry. Um, um, there's, there were so many times where I failed. Things didn't go my way. Things didn't work out. We lost a lot of money. Thing, you know, I lost time with my family. And, you know, we're in a position where we're at now. There's more, dear, dear God. Um, that if I kept seeing as failures, I should have quit a long time ago. But instead of quitting, I decided to keep going and keep pushing through. And the store is, it is where it is now because I kept persisting, kept evolving, kept changing, kept adapting, kept pushing forward. You know, it's the same thing with him. him in his anger, I was mad at his statement. He was like, you're stuck in a dead end position in Phoenixville. I was like, no, I'm not stuck. Because I had to remind him, because he was one of the very few people that saw where we started. And look at the store now compared to where it was. We're not stuck. We're like, compared to where I was in the beginning and now the store is freaking night and day. I don't know how many stores in that small short period with the lack of funding that I had may have grown to this level. I'm gonna be a little, you know, what's it called? Uh, narcissistic about it, but I think I've done a pretty good job. With the lack of experience that I did have, um, the you know, and the very little money that I had to start off with this business, I've I've really taken it a far way. I really have. And there's it's, it, there are days where I have to remind myself of that. And the example why I brought him up was it reminded myself again too, and I told him it's like if you kept getting this upset, you're, you know, we're human. We're allowed to get angry. Like even for me, my fist right here, you can't really see in the light though. I, this past weekend, the stress and the exhaustion and everything hit me so hard to the point where I almost blew up and I, I had to step outside and, you know, I, I, I punched a door, a steel door three times just in my anger just to get it all out. But like, you get like that. You're allowed to get angry. You can't just be like emotionless the entire time because we're human. And you're allowed to get angry, but you can't let that anger, that stress, that depression take hold of you and just dictate your you know your daily life going forward. You know, because you won't be able to you won't see what's on the other side of the road if you don't. And I think he finally, he understood that and it, it really hit home for him. And for me, it's, that's really what pushes me to go forward now because I'm scared. There are times where I want I just want to cry just because I'm, I hate the position I'm in right now. I hate the fact that like we're behind on our bills. You know, I struggle to buy, you know, me and my wife really don't go out because we can't afford to. We. I buy ice cream and we Netflix at home and that's our date night. You know, I know she doesn't complain to me, but you know, my wife, but she's a real trooper. She doesn't hold it against me because she knows that this is a team effort. And I am always gonna bring her up because this is, her and I are in this together. Because I'm not home. She's like the only other man in her life is my dad and my son. And you know, but she's sacrificing her time with me as well too. So for me, when I make these decisions, when I get like that, when I get scared and I get upset about the current situation we're in, I get, I start to lose hope, I'm reminded of that. That, you know what, we've made it this far. I've been in this mood perpetually for almost two and a half years, almost three years now I've been like this. You know, and it pushes me to keep going forward because we're still growing. Like, at the end of it, the business is still growing. This whole weekend, I didn't have room. People left, I had to turn people away. People didn't come because it was packed. And it's, 
like even, and, and then I'm gonna go back to that one kid again for the high school student. His safe schools, the ones that he was disappointed, like that he wasn't even thinking of. He was so upset about the fact that he didn't get into his first choices, and his all his hard work didn't pay off. But I'm gonna tell you right now. I told him right now, flat out. I was like, "Hey, your safe school is like one of the best colleges in the Northeast, one of the top ranking business schools." By the way, I got rejected from there. And it was just, it was astonishing to me. And it's the same thing for me right now. It's like, man, I can't believe we're in the financial situation that we're in. Um, you know, I'm struggling so hard. Health is thinking, like family life. It's like, man, like I'm a failure for being in this position. I'm like, we're up, you know, I'm not going over numbers, but we're up from last year quite significantly. The store's growing quite significantly. Sales are growing quite significantly. Demand is growing significantly. More and more people are like, things, good things are happening and there are a lot of times where I let the bad things get in the way and they do and I still make bad decisions you know I'm not gonna lie but I've been getting better and going back to the original point I'm almost home so I'm gonna get to the point here it's you know, this is a diary, but it's also for those who are watching this video, just following my journey and maybe thinking about doing something yourself, you really have to weigh up, you know, what is the absolute worst case scenario of your decision, of what's gonna happen in the next month of your business. Can you imagine it? Like, if you, once you imagine it, imagine an even worst case scenario. And then you have to ask yourself, are you ready for that? Are you re are you willing to risk having to deal with that? And are you prepared for the consequences of that? You know, you're like, oh, that's really deep. And that's, that's really like, oh, that's really negative. And you're being a negative Nancy. And like, like I, I, I think about the super positive, but what last year taught me is I have to prepare for that. And the people in my current team, the freelancers now, but the current team, I've learned to always be transparent, as 100% transparent as possible, and 100% as honest as possible. Because if those situations arise, they're not blindsided. And I'm not blindsided. And thankfully, because that's the relations I've I've had with my current team for the last almost six months, almost almost ten months now, you know, we have a level of respect. Even this past weekend, um, all three of us, the, actually all four of us, really got together and we we were all like, we were pissed. We were just super stressed, and we just kind of came to the conclusion like. We all said like we we feel like we're in a really bad place, and we were pretty depressed actually on Friday and Saturday. And, you know, we looked at each other, but like, we didn't blame each other, you know, because we built that honest relationship. And I'm glad we did because, you know, it just shows like, you know, we, it really like, we're all falling, but we're leaning on each other. And if anything, we're motivating each other to work even harder because we know we, we see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we have to get through this huge Tetris thing. And I'm constantly keeping them in the loop because, you know, they're my team. And unlike before, I'm gonna make sure that I'm 100% transparent about my feelings, um, the situation and everything. Because the more they know, the more they're not blindsided. The more where they see me blow up, they know it's not me being me, it's just the stress getting to me. And I'm really glad that everyone that I've surrounded with me now understands that and gets it. And because I've kept preparing for bad worst case scenarios, we've kept, we didn't hit worst case scenarios, but we did hit the scenario that was most likely. We kept hitting it. And the fact that I've been taking this more realistic approach while still being optimistic, like, I, I'm i like, this is where I want to be, but this is where I think what's realistic, but this is, you know, we've been doing this. We're moving forward, not at the rate that we want to and I hope, but we're still moving forward. And that's the, that's the most important thing to do. And this next move coming up is really going to, it's really going to test me on how well I prepared. It really is. Am I ready to detach myself from the business? And that's 
Oh, that's the thing I want to talk about. So I'll spend a little bit more here. I'm actually running out of battery, so I can be quick about it. My thing is, I can I cannot be the face of my business because if I really want to franchise it in the future, really grow it to be a really big organization and corporation, I cannot be the one that has to be in the store, in the front, having to uh, uh, cater to the customers and cook and do everything. I cannot be that person. But even if I get this financing, I'm not going to jump the gun and just hire everyone and then just take a back seat and sit down and relax. No, I have to make sure that I built everything properly, you know, fall into a coma or disappear. The store needs to be able to take care of itself. And even for me going forward this next move, you know, I'm gonna be mainly focused on being in the kitchen, running things in the background, and make sure I hire on a team that can handle the counter, the customers, the waitresses, you know, the, the run around. A coherent team that I'm still the center of, but I'm gonna surround myself. But I'm by the end of the summer, if not early fall, I want to be able to not have to work 100 hours a week still work 40 60 maybe you know maybe more but even if i'm not there the store is running perfect i should not have to be in the front lines but i'm still in the back end in the kitchen the kind of whatever i'm still there managing everyone the you know, managing my expectations and everything and making sure it is a solid coherent team to the point where let's say we do open up a second location i should be confident in being like I'm just gonna leave the store and go and set up, or I send them over and I train a new team and they're able to open it. Or, you know, even if I finally, let's say the store's doing well to the point where I can actually go on vacation for once. First time in three years, take my wife out to Disney World or something and the store will do just fine. To the point where I maybe will never have an interaction with the customer again, but the store is flourishing and growing, they're being taken care of, and, I, and they're fulfilling my mission. And that's going to be the goal for me in a few months. And it's going to be a lot. It, it's going to be, I'm going to be working harder than I ever did in the last two and a half years, three years. Because the way I have to do it, piece of construction begins in a week and a half. After I close the store at midnight, I'm going to be spending a few hours at the news place working it out. Organizing and catalyzing everything that's in my basement right now of what we have, what we need. I'm gonna be consistent, I'm gonna be not sleeping <laughs> the next few months. You know, I'm not gonna see my wife and son a lot. I know I mentioned that in the last video. I'm not, you know, I look at him and he's become more and more attached to me. You know, it, shit, I'm sorry, oh, sorry. I'm getting emotional right now. You know, I regret not seeing him for four months last year, but thankfully like, he was a baby, so he didn't really, rem he's not gonna remember those things, but like, I missed that. And I'm about to miss it again, but it's not as bad as it was last year, because I'm gonna see him at least once, a I'm gonna see him at least once a day. I come home, he's sleeping, I see that. And, and when I wake up, he's awake, thankfully, most of the time, and I play with him for at least an hour, at, at most, and, I, and then I had to get going. It sucks, but I at least get that much in. And what, what hurts me now is, um. Lately, he's become more attached to me. Um, he comes to me, asks me for pick him up, and he even like prefers me over his mom. Not like hundred percent, like, but like there are the moments where he prefers just be with me. Even today, I sat and we both ate together, and you know, it, it hurts. It sucks that you know. I apologize. I don't mean to cry. Um, it sucks. <laughs> But this is what I gotta do. Like, I'm doing this for him. I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for me as well. And I imagine for me, it's like, if I want to have a year from now when he's walking and talking, he's walking, but he's talking, he's remembering things. And, you know, I want to go on vacations. I want to go to Six Flags with him. I want to go to Sesame Place. I want to go to the zoo. I want to do all these fun things with him. But in order to do that, I gotta make sure I do what I need to do to progress and push my business forward correctly and right so I can enjoy those things and sincerely enjoy. I should be able to go on vacation and not have to worry about the store so I can truly enjoy my time with my family. And my, and my wife agrees. 
that's where we need to get to. Even our marriage, like, we haven't had our wedding yet. You know, we're married legally because we did it through the court, but we want to be able to have our wedding and, and it truly be a celebration, you know? And so we've both kind of swallowed up our privacy. I, I had this conversation with her the other day. It's like, do you just want to just, you know, should we just have a small one, do a small wedding hall or a restaurant and we just, just get it out of the way? And we're both at the point now, it's like, no, like, let's do it right. You know what, let's not let our wedding be a celebration of, you know, two people coming together and the future is unknown. It's no, we, we, we've gone through the hard times already. We have, we have uh, potentially two or three beautiful children at the time. We're happy, we're financially secure, and we're both just, the wedding is more of now, we're just going to celebrate, you know, our family and our future and, and, be, and be together with my friends and, and everything. And we're, you know, sorry, that's way off topic, but that's where I'm gonna go. And that's the sacrifice that we're making. And I'm scared, once again, I am scared of my health and how my mental state's gonna be the stress level that I'm going to be dealing with, my depression, because, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm prone to being depressed. Um, but, you know, th don't worry about that. Like, I've gone past that stage. I know how to deal with it and cope with my own depression. But it's, you know, you know, am I going to get through this? You know, and I will. I know I will. And I have to. But it's, these are the kind of things that even there are decisions in life that you guys have to think about. But I won't bore you guys more. I've went, I already went over time again. I'll get better with these. I, I, it's weird. Like I just get, I, but I'm done. I'm done. We'll talk more later. If you guys have obviously any questions or comments, you know, the, my personal channel is a lot more easier to deal with than my, my tech channel. So I can see your comments and everything. We'll, we'll get to there. But, you know, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, once again, if you listen to this part of the video, again, I appreciate your time. You know, hopefully this channel can actually grow into, you know, my, my, I'm gonna be selfish. My personal goal for my channel is number one, obviously documenting my journey, but be able to maybe grow big enough to maybe do my own TED talk. I don't know. I think I'm I'm building up my own his, my own experience and wealth and knowledge to the point where if Gamers Heaven ends, ends up being very successful, I can do a TED talk on this. So, um, small selfish goal, but mainly it is to really um, your guys are gonna be you know this is to show like behind the scenes what's really happening. You know, a lot of people don't take the time to get to really know me and judge me really quickly and. This is kind of my way showing this is what this is what's happening. This is me. And for those of you taking the time to really get to know me, I really appreciate it. Um, so please let me know by leaving a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, if you listen to this part of the video and you're you like what I'm saying or at least enjoy what you know my journey, please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification squad. Um, and then please go ahead and share it with anyone that you think might actually benefit from uh, these videos and stuff and my journey and being able to at least relate or something. Um, but other than that though, uh, I'm gonna get going inside. I need to get some sleep. Actually, I gotta do some work. So I'm probably gonna be up for another two hours. Um, but seriously, thank you guys again. And whatever time of day it is in the world that you're watching this video, Please have a good day, good morning, and good evening. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. <laughs>